Hey, kind of students, this is Jacob Clifford. The AP micro exam is just a few days away, so I made this video to answer your questions and to give you my FRQ predictions. I'm also leading a live review session the night before the AP exam, so I hope to see you there. Some students like Bob wonder why I'm not doing more live review sessions, and the answer is simple, efficiency. The best part about live review sessions is you can engage with the thousands of students that are also taking the exam. But live sessions, at least for economics, are not as efficient as these pre-made videos. In other words, I think there's a better use of your time than watching an hour and a half live review session. For example, this video. I'm probably gonna say everything I would in a live session, except I can do it twice as fast because it's pre-recorded and I can edit, 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 edit. And that gives you more time to watch my other videos, do practice questions, or to watch the videos where I go over fair responses in the ultimate review packet. Okay, with that said, let's answer some of your questions. Mr. Clifford, can you make a video about the scores you need to get a three, four, or a five on the exam? This is the breakdown from the 2019 AP micro exam. It's different every year, but in general, if you get over 55% of the questions right, then you're definitely gonna pass. To get a five, expect to get at least 85% of the questions right. Last year, about 20% of students got a five, 25% of students got a four, and 20% got a three. So about 30% of the students won't pass, but not you, because you're watching my videos and you're putting in the time. You can do it! Mr. Clifford, should we leave hard questions that take too much time and go back later, or try to solve them right there? You're definitely gonna see some hard questions on either topics you've never learned, or questions that have a lot of calculations that are gonna take a lot of time. If your goal was to get 100%, that you spent all your time on those really hard questions, but Remember, to get a five, you don't need anywhere near 100%. Theoretically, you could skip the 10 hardest multiple choice questions and still get a five, as long as you get the other easier questions correct. In my opinion, it's better to skip those really hard questions to make sure you get all the questions done, then go back. But that's just me. Do what you've done effectively on your other AP exams. You can do it! On exam day, you're gonna do the multiple choice questions first, then take a break, then do the free responses. And the FRQs start with a 10 minute reading period to help you organize your answers. I think you should use that time to read all three questions to get an idea what the exam is asking. And that'll help you allocate your time. If you know question three is really easy, then you can spend a little more time in questions one and two. And during that reading period, you're allowed to write down answers, but they won't be graded. You have to rewrite them on this sheet. That's right, for some reason they have line paper, even though we're drawing a bunch of graphs, this is what your answer sheet's gonna look like. You can do it! Okay, let's talk about content. This morning I jumped on Zoom sessions with Mr. Bandel students in Minnesota, and they asked a great question. Mr. Clifford, what are the four most important topics on the AP micro exam? In my opinion, number one is the theory of the firm, the idea of being able to understand and draw the graphs for perfect competition and monopolies. You're definitely gonna see that in the free responses and in the multiple choice questions. Number two is just good old fashioned supply and demand. You're gonna have four or five basic supply and demand questions like if the price of an input goes up, what happens to the price and quantity in the market? The supply curve would shift left, so the price would go up and the quantity would go down. And remember, just draw those graphs on your exam. When in doubt, graph it out. Number three, in terms of things you have to go back and take a look at, I would say elasticity. You'll see two or three questions on it, some that are general and others that actually have you do calculations. Important topic number four is externalities. You'll probably have a question about positive externalities and negative externalities, and you also can see the graphs on the free responses. These four aren't the only topics, but they're good ones to keep in mind going into the AP exam. You can do it! Okay, one more question before I reveal my FRQ predictions. Mr. Clifford, is there a handout that shows what we need to memorize? Well, in general, I don't like the term memorize. You're not trying to memorize these graphs. You need to understand them. But if you're having a hard time, you might wanna look at those graphs right before you walk in the exam. When you get there, flip your test over and draw those key graphs so you've got them. And again, there's some equations you gotta know like the elastic coefficients and the short run cost curves, ATC, AFC, ABC, and MC. In terms of a handout, I suggest taking a look at the ultimate cheat sheet in my ultimate review packet. Okay, here we go, the moment you've been waiting for, it's time for my predictions on this year's FRQs. Remember, I don't actually know what's on the exam, so don't be mad at me if I'm wrong, I'm just making a guess. And I put other teachers' educated guesses on my website so you can see what they think. This year on set one, I think you're gonna see side-by-side -side graphs for perfect competition. So drawing a profit or a loss in the short run and the next part of the question is going to ask you about putting it back in the long run. Then the question is going to switch up and start talking about externalities, either positive or negative externality, saying assume instead there's an externality, where is allocatively efficient or where is the socially optimal or dead weight loss or having you draw that graph. So I think it's perfect competition and externalities on question one. I think question two is going to be on utility maximizing, a question like this. They'll give you the total utility for consuming two different products and an income constraint and you have to find the right combination to maximize utility. From there, they're going to switch the question and ask you about elasticity and calculating the elasticity to demand or supply coefficient. So for question two, I think maximizing utility and elasticity. And for free response number three, I think they're gonna pull from unit five with a perfect competitive labor market and firm. So either a chart, we have to calculate the marginal revenue product and find out how many workers to hire, or the graph,
graph showing the same concept. Also inside there, I think they're gonna work in a minimum wage or something's gonna happen in the market that affects the price and therefore the MRP. So to recap, free response number one, perfect competition and externalities. Number two, utility maximizing and elasticity. And number three, labor market, market and firm. But again, this is just an educated guess. Don't get mad at me if I'm wrong. Make sure you study everything. That's it. If this video helped you, be sure to like and leave a comment. Let me know what you think could be on the free response. And the next time I'm gonna see you is the live review session the night before the AP exam. Thanks for watching. Till next time.